Scripture reading, Psalm 125. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, from this time on and forevermore. For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, so that the righteous might not stretch out their hands to do wrong. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good, and to those who are upright in their hearts. But those who turn aside to their own crooked ways, the Lord will lead away with evildoers. Peace be upon Israel. I have older cars now, and uh, I got a rejection sticker. That's why we have the sermon title, Rejected. <laughs> My car is rejected. <laughs> but there's more about rejection. There was a great difference between what, what Israel was like and what our country is like and was like and all of the changes in Christianity over the years. What was read this morning in Psalm 125 is one of the many psalms of ascent. Those are the psalms that were sung, as many psalms were. Uh, poetry and singing go together. You'll notice that in your hymn book as well. But the psalms of ascent were sung as the people were going up to Jerusalem to worship. And Jerusalem was the center of the worship for the Israeli people in those days. And it was the center of their community as well, for they were the community of God. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. And that is a word that can go from the Old Testament to the New and on to our lives today. Those who trust in the Lord are those who, like Mount Zion, cannot be moved but abide forever. That is the promise of God to all those who put their hearts and lives with God. God surrounds his people like the mountains surrounded Jerusalem in those days. But the scepter of wickedness would not rest on the land because that was their central place. And those that were causing difficulty and trial and tribulation, they ended out, up outside of the community of God. Well, today, I'm not sure that that situation exists. It didn't exist in the time of Jesus either. He came to a t in a time when the Roman Empire was very much controlling the world of that day. And the people of Israel, even their leaders and the chief priests, scribes, all of those people were in that place of trying to adjust to that compromise that would work that would give them a life that was pleasing at least to some degree. And of course, there was collaboration with Rome, but many, many people ended up in difficulty and trial, and there was, there was great tribulation in those days. The poor were having difficulty, though anyone who was not in the prime condition was able to find only difficulty, and there was no assistance. Of course, there was no Social Security, no Medicare, none of the social conveniences that we have today that have changed our lives. Nevertheless, with all of that taking place, Jesus came to show that it was not about the things of this world, but rather about the things of Jesus Christ and love and care and God's the Father's will, that all should find that truth. And so we have the words for meditation from Matthew 28. It really is the Great Commission, isn't it? Go to make disciples. That is the mission of the church. And as we start a new Sunday school year, that is going to be our mission here, to teach and, and help others to come to a knowledge of Jesus Christ, not only as their Savior, but the empowerment of their lives in a, in a world that is looking the other way. Jesus was rejected, and we're finding more and more in our society that Jesus is being rejected, that the church is being rejected, and things are being said poorly about it. You probably watch television. It's pretty hard not to these days. It's almost all around us. But there was a commercial 
about uh, to changing faith and not being a Presbyterian anymore, but being a Pescatarian. Some of you have seen that. In other words, it was my legal seafoods. I'm not promoting them or denying them. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that their commercial is appropriate, but it was the idea to convert to fish. Uh, if you if you are a Presbyterian, you're going to get a sermon. I suppose you could say if you're a congregational, you, you're going to get a sermon. But I don't think preaching in a sermon is the most important, important part of Christianity. It is rather our learning and coming together and finding that fellowship in Jesus Christ and being able to live it in a world that is perhaps going the other way. So, what is, a, what is it about that commercial that is important? I think what's really important is that what are you going to get? What are you going to get? You're going to get a sermon if you go to church. You're going to get a nice tasty seafood. And I love seafood. My daughter and I have been eating shrimp every now and then uh, over the summer. I love that. But, you know, these things, Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these other things, which would including the fish, will be added to you. <laughs> I think that's an important situation. Not putting first what we will get. But we have a society of what I think they call consumerism. It's all about what you can get and what's the best deal. Or what better car you can get, what better food, or whether, what deal you can make with the electric company. It's all about what you can get. But Jesus said, no, it's not about all that you can get. It's rather about what you can give. What did Jesus give? He gave his life to show that it is the giving of love and the caring for others that's most important. When we have individuality, and it's so individuality that it becomes a, a, almost a worship of the things of this world, not only does it divide people, but it also isolates them. And it's with that isolation that we have all the problems of our society. Because someone who is not governed by a larger community, by a community of love, is therefore able to go and find the ways of this world and the sin that so easily can beset them. And we have all of the violence. What we hear about today is about those that are outside that, that element of love. Those who are breaking the laws of community. That's what you see on television. That's what people seem to like to hear. But it is not what we ought to be, nor what we should be concentrating on, because God is still on the throne. And as it was in Psalm 125, those who trust in God shall not be moved, because Jesus has promised it, as well as God. And for this, we are to turn our lives to God, to see and to give in that loving community. Many of us here are involved in loving service everywhere, and it's so important today to bring that love and that care and that concern so that there won't be those who are turning aside, at least to the great extent that there is. We are to do good. We are to find that way that God can move and work through us in a manner that is pleasing not only to God, but is pleasing to others. What's interesting is with all of the... the things that we are to buy in this consumerism effort that we have. None of those things will bring happiness. They won't bring any sense of security. And they eventually will only disappoint. But it's interesting that giving is the means by which we really obtain all that there is of God. There is a paradox there, perhaps. Because the giving of God is the giving of love. And when you give, you receive. Blessed are those who give. Blessed are those who receive of the blessings of God, not the remuneration of this world. God's desire to give and our desire to receive of God's gift end up working together to build the kingdom of God. Now, there is a satisfaction. There is a joy and there is a completion in our lives when we receive Jesus Christ, when we share that love one with another, and when our greatest desire is to see the kingdom of God built, 
is to center on God and his righteousness and love and to see that what he designed for this world is not a negative but a positive. It is to transform and change. So the world sometimes has been turning and twisting that to be something else. But it is not the mission of the church. It is not what God is. God is a God of love and caring who wants the very best for all of us. He wants us to find our individual talents and abilities. He wants to multiply them and use them to his glory by sending his spirit to empower and strengthen and bring us to love. That's what it's all about. Jesus was rejected. Love can be rejected. And many of the good intentions that we might have can be rejected. But Jesus, with all the rejection that he received, was able to, able to overcome all of the rejection. He was able to turn his people to a life of love and caring. And it's interesting, we're talking about legal seafoods and it's about fish, right? Well, the symbol of fish is the symbol of the church. I, I was going to research it, and I'm not sure anybody particularly knows why that symbol is the symbol of the church. But to me, it has something to do with the fact that the early disciples, many of them were fishermen. They came from the lower ends of society, but they were people who now knew how to work, and they were people who knew how to care about other people. That's where they came from, and that's where Jesus went for his disciples. We don't need to have a PhD in order to be a Christian and to be effective in this world, but we do need to obey the Lord Jesus, to have the heart of love, and to share it. Without that, we, we really have nothing. So as the church has the symbol of the fish, may it not be the fish that we eat, but rather the giving that Jesus showed us to, to be. And he gave, of course, the commission to Peter, who denied him three times. It's not about perfection. He gave it to Peter. And he said to him, go and feed my sheep. So it is for all of us to share and to give what we have been given and to see that love proceed. And in this world, we have something entirely different, something that is tearing us apart because of the nature of the division that comes when we are centering only on ourselves. To see God and to see his purpose is to see everyone as being the children of God that God intends to have come into a great community of love. It's not just this church. It's not just the people that are in this community or in the world even but it's the larger picture that God has that there be unity of love and of caring. And that is the purpose. Anything that stands in the way of that is something that the Spirit of God wishes to work with in order to show that love and that caring. The larger purpose. And when we see that larger purpose and we see ourselves as a part of it, it becomes a wonderful thing. It's not about a hierarchy of people or of corporations uh, with presidents and all of that sort of thing. It is rather those who are willing to give their lives to God, such as those fishermen of ore, that bring and establish the church of God. And so we need that more and more today to, for God to empower us and move us and change us. So... Rejection is something that we perhaps have to live with in many different circumstances. And it's not only rejection, it's the, all of the negatives that come into our lives, whatever they may be. And can we forgive? Can we move away from those situations? And can we look beyond what is the immediate situation in order to see the plan that God has? And can our love be sustained? And the answer is, of course, yes. Because the church and everyone who is of a, the will to be of the Lord's personality are like Mount Zion. They are that strong place. They are that place where God is moving. And so because of that, we know that God will do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. 
So we need to stand, and having done all to stand, as the scripture would say, to stand for the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, to stand for the movement of God in a society that is moving away from God, to encourage one another, to encourage anyone who is showing a way of standing for the love of God, to show encouragement and love and support, rather than becoming into this divided world that comes from seeking what we want. But it's rather giving of ourselves so that the, when we have those who are in disagreement one with another, that we are going to place first the Lord Jesus Christ and God, and we're gonna have a community that is of love and caring that is looking to the future. We never will see all eye to eye, and freedom is part of our ability. We should be free to worship. We should be free to be able to have our, the beliefs that we have. But when our beliefs divide, when they destroy, they are the, on the other side of the equation. And we cannot have that and have the church continue to be a place of blessing and of love. For love is able to control so many things because of the Spirit of God, and it's not a control like you would have control over some people or thing, like the iron grip that the Roman Empire had over the world in its day, but it's the control of love that is a willing spirit of love that is within us that changes and, and moves within a society. So we have the opportunity in the days in which we live now to continue to let this church be a focus of light and of love and of care. And let us not forget that commission, for there are all sorts of things that would come along that would divert us from the main attention of what the church is all about. It's all about seeking God. It's all about helping others to know the wonderful love of God that transforms our lives. It's all about sharing that love wherever we go. It's all about changing the moral position of our country day by day and moment by moment. And if Jesus was rejected, you get to realize that rejection sticker does not hold. And as soon as you fix your car, you drive right up, and I did, I think within a day, I put the switch on or whatever was missing, and the car was approved. Well, it's the same with Jesus. If we are outside of his love, and we find that we are in difficulty, and we know that we've done some things wrong, or we are divided from the church, or from society, or from family, what we do know is that God, and through Jesus Christ, is able to forgive sin, to take it away and separate it as far as the east is from the west. Without that forgiveness, I certainly wouldn't be standing here. I would still be caught in my sin, and I would still be apart and separated from the church and from God. But that forgiveness is there for all of us, and because of forgiveness, we can take the rejected sticker off. So we should run right across the street and put over there victory, because it's not about rejection, it's about love. And it's about the inclusion of love that God desires that we should have. When we come to communion, we always have the opportunity to realize what it's all about. What is it all about? It's all about Jesus giving us of his life, his life and even his blood shed on the cross, that we would have that forgiveness. Forgiveness comes with a price. Jesus paid the price. And because Jesus is the Son of God, we have to realize that God paid the price. God, who created us, also bent down into a place of difficulty and gave his life there, gave his only begotten Son. There's a mystery connected with that. We will never understand it completely, and we have difficulty with those who have a spiritual problem that cannot see something that is meant to infill and envelop our hearts and lives. But God is able to break down that situation, and he's able to give us a community of love and a fellowship. And because of that, we are joined together by a mystery, by a spirit of God. We are able to give our lives, and we're also able to serve 
because Jesus gave his life, because he shed his blood, because he enabled us by that power. He defeated death on the cross as well as sin. There is nothing that can be done to us here on this world that will stop the wonderful news of the Lord Jesus Christ. If one is gone over there, there will be more over here. God's presence is to bring life and that more abundantly. That is God's desire. So it's symbolic. It's a remembrance of what Jesus has done. But it's also the knowledge that Jesus gave of his spirit and desired that not only would he give his life for us so that we would, not, we would not suffer eternal damnation or that we would be destroyed because of our sin, but rather that we be, would be empowered by the Holy Spirit which God gave. It's about sanctification. It's about setting us apart to the work of God. And God desires to do that with an everlasting love. I'm so glad that Jesus gave his life for me. I'm so glad that, that we have the opportunity and the love. And when I see people, as I do weekly because of my nursing home involvement over the many years, I see so many people that turn their hearts towards God and in whatever position they are in, you can see the love and you can see the care and the knowledge that we have a time of future glory and bliss is just amazing. To me, it is the, the greatest part of what we have here on earth because the Lord shall return one day and he shall catch up those who are here on earth and bring down those who are above and catch everyone up to be together with the Lord. So shall we ever be with the Lord. That is the Christ, Christmas, yeah, Christmas, the Christian promise and that promise will not fail. God's wonderful love of community. And because of that, we can have a glorious future, a future that is able to withstand all the wiles and difficulties of the alternative forces in this world so that we may see God's love. So as we approach communion today, may we be united in that love. May we have a sense of that significance of what Jesus has done and the empowerment that he has given us. And of course, if we are holding back anything that is causing us to be apart from God, then we should take care of that in order that God's wonderful love will prevail. Shall we bow our hearts in prayer? Our gracious and loving God, we're so thankful this morning that you are with us, that you love us, and that you will sustain us, and that no matter what complexities there may be in this world, we realize it's pretty simple for us. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Jesus' love and empowerment is enough to change and transform our society. Help us, Lord, to be true to your will. We know, Lord, that in a time when there is so much doubt that we need to be empowered by your spirit. We need to be examples of your love. And so we are humbled because we cannot do any of that ourselves, but we know that you can. And so we ask you this morning that you will fill our hearts and inspire and strengthen us for the future.